Hello everybody, welcome back. This is Kevin from Double D Construction. Uh, just figured I would do another video. I had somebody ask me for more details on the machine itself, but when I asked about it, they haven't responded about what they wanted to see. So I figured what I decided to end up doing was taking the panels off because I wanted to paint it or have it do a, a gray and white scheme. Um, kind of like the Volvo, but uh, going white instead of yellow. And I match kind of their larger Volvos that come white. I kind of match the paint scheme. A lot of the grab irons will be orange. The paint will be white. And then the rest of it will be gray. Um, I believe real Volvos are generally black, not gray. But either way, it'll look good. And I'm pretty excited about it. But what I decided to do is, since they asked for more information, um, since they didn't tell me what they were looking for, I figured I would just do a video on the internals of it. Since I took all the components off, Technically, I can actually run it like this. I have taken the hydraulics apart. This right here is your adjuster along with the pressure gauge. And so um, I would have to reassemble that properly and, and it was giving me more of a fuss than I wanted to deal with. So I figured, well, I can walk you through it, show you how every, or what everything is. And if there are more questions um, on it, you know, I'm more than happy to answer what I can. Uh, we probably won't run it because until the new panels come in. Um, this one, the the uh, adjuster, I'll just call it adjuster one because there's actually two on this machine. And this gauge both go through the upper body panel. And so for me to, um, what you call it, for me to reassemble it and then go to, you know, I'd have to take it back apart, drink more oil and go through all of that if I decided to or when I when I get the panels back in and go to put it back together. So instead of doing that, we'll probably um, show an assembly video when I do that. I don't know. Depends on what people want to see. Um, it's pretty straightforward. All the screws come from the bottom, really. That's the majority of it. Other than the top panel, they come from the top. But I think you've seen that in my previous videos. Uh, but essentially, it's it's a pretty simple uh, to take apart. Design. It's a pretty simple design to take apart. It's not anything too complicated. Um, eventually, we're going to do lighting and sound on it, too. Uh, I just need to uh, get that ordered so that way I can do that. And I'll probably do that on video, too. Uh, the powder coating shop hasn't called me in a bit. I think it's another week out or something like that. So I've got a little time. Um, but anyways, now that uh, it is taken apart and the parts are sent off and all of that, it's basically a working chassis with no body. So what's cool, uh, since I decided to leave the arm gray and all that, it actually functions if I were to tighten the lines on and all of that. It would just work like normal. Um, but it's a little bit of work to do that, so we're not going to. But I'm going to stop it here. I'll pull it off its, or pull the camera up off the, uh, off of its stand right there, and then we'll walk through the machine. So you can kind of see the internals and how they work. You know, most of your hydraulic models from them, I'm, just, I'm pretty sure they're basically the same. I mean, the dozers like this uh, also. So, I mean, there are obviously things that are different, but uh, not completely. So, it's, it's all simple, basic uh, design, or similar design. So, anyways, uh, we'll cut it here, and then we'll kind of show the parts and all that, and hopefully if somebody has questions, they can just They'll just ask in there, and then I can answer your questions. Um, I'm not going to say that I am a expert at all of this. I basically bought them, and I play with them, and take them apart, and I've kind of figured out how they work. I was a mechanic um, quite a while ago, so for me, this is just the fun part of it. Um, this is probably the biggest part that I like. But uh, either way, just uh, I'll cut it here, and I'll go do that. Thank you. All right, guys, welcome back. Here are the internals of the 360L in a much better light. Um, I was told to fix my lighting, <laughs> and uh, sadly I didn't have the other lamps on when we were doing it before, I don't think. But regardless, this is what it looks like without the body. It's actually fairly simple to understand. You've got your tank right here. The lid comes right off, and you can actually see down inside the tank, so you can actually tell what's there and what's not. Now this is open. So this is just a tube. There is no there is no uh, blockage for that. Then of course you have your fill port. Uh, if you don't take the or if you take or if you don't take the top the top off, you can just unscrew this, 
Um, honestly, you probably should do that if you can most of the time, um, because if you keep taking the lid off, it does have a seal on it, but eventually it'll wear. All right, this right here is your pressure adjuster number one and your gauge. Both of these are attached to the upper body, and you can see them when you open the hood. Well, this one you can see always, and then the gauge you'll see when you open the hood. Um, it's actually set up, I want to say, more like this over here. This is set up like over here, like that. I just have it set off to the side because, of course, I broke it free and, and set it off to the side so I didn't leak oil in the model itself. And then, as you can tell, of course, there are hoses that attach it to this, which is your pump and motor for the pump. Okay. Pretty decent sized guy. Um, not the loudest thing in the world, definitely not the quietest. You can upgrade these, don't know that you need to. You know, this is a new model for me, and the one that my buddy bought has been running pretty good. So, I don't know, unless I absolutely have to, I'm probably just going to leave it alone and not mess with that. Okay, and then after your pump, now you have your block set, right? I don't know what the exact terminology is, but this is basically your hydraulic block. Um, you have three sets, so of course, your what do they call it, your main boom, your arm, which is right here, and then your bucket hydraulics, which are right here. And so that block is going to control all that. If you were going to try and add like a hydraulic quick connect, like I would really like to do, don't know if I'm going to do it yet, but I would like to, because I don't know how determined I am to finish this or if I just want to, you know, keep on going. Um, you can add another block, or you can you can buy a four a, a four part block. So a four circuit, I call it circuit, but four, I'll just say call it circuit block. Okay, it's just kind of up to you, but you can get them in in add a in add a add a circuit, I guess we call it. Um, and that's that's how you would do that. You would add that on there, run the line. You know, you would add that on. You know, add another one here with another servo and everything, and then you just run the lines up the thing or up the uh, arm all the way down to the bucket. And it's actually set up to allow you to do that. There's another set of holes there, and then of course there's clamps there, and then, you know, of course the hydraulic quick connect would be right there. So you can do that. You'll also see like shears and a lot other stuff that you can do hydraulically that they can add. And then of course you have another adjuster here which you probably don't want to touch. Uh, the dozer has the same exact style. I have opened this up too much and unscrewed the screw right out of it, and that never goes well. <laughs> we uh, popped fluid out of that in the dozer. It was not fun. Luckily, I had disassembled it mostly anyways, so I was able to clean it up pretty easily. But that's also an adjuster. It's better to just use this because you just turn this here, and it'll adjust your pressure. As you're running, you can see the pressure on the... Um, on the gauge. Uh, what it's supposed to be, I don't actually know. I think I was running at 2 key kPa. I'd have to, I have to look at the exact spec. But I tightened it a little bit and that was it. Uh, I didn't want to damage it, but it seemed to be working really well there. This right here is your slew motor. These things have a slew gear that is known to fail. Um, you gotta like hydraulic hobbies. It's down in the link on my uh, opening video, or my unboxing videos, they uh, they have a stronger slew gear that they sell. And it's like 12 bucks. It's not much at all. Okay, and then of course, that's the hydraulic, or this was the hydraulic side. Now we get into the electronics, your slew gear, and of course your drive gears, they are electronic. They're not hydraulic, um, obviously. If not obviously, then they're not. Okay, this right here is your receiver. And of course you have everything plugged into that. And then you've got all your you know all the rest of the electronics. So you've got your different motor connections. This right here is your ESC for the pump. I'm pretty sure that's how it works on the dozer. I haven't really fully mapped it out, but yeah, yes. This is the hydraulic the hydraulic ESC I can see right now. You're on the wires. They come around the slew gear and they go right up to this motor. Okay. This right here is your block for all the wiring, um, where you can connect everything. Of course, you've got your battery connection, which it sits right in here. And a good, this is the uh, battery that I use. I think I've shown it before, and it fits in there, real nice. That's about the best you can get to fit in there. 
Okay, and it is a Power Hobby 7600 Lipo, um, 3S. Like them quite a bit. Been very, very good batteries so far. Uh, I think a couple years that I've been doing this. Um, and then, of course, down here, you're going to see under the wiring, you're going to see the ESCs. There's three of these, you know, two run your drive motors and one runs your sloop gear. And then, of course, there's your sloop motor. You know, it goes straight from there to there. Um, and I mean, that's really pretty much it. Here are your servo wires that come off the right here, come off the servo, and of course, they. They go to the receiver because that's what you're controlling. And I mean, that's that's pretty much the internals of this. It's Everything else is pretty straightforward. You know, here are all your lines. Your lines will come down to here, and if you follow if you follow the line, you can figure out which block it goes to. I'm not too concerned about it because I don't know that I'm going to be disconnecting or any of that, any of these or anything like that. So I think we're good. Um, but, you know, just let me know if you have questions about that. Uh, maybe we can look at it. What's odd for me is it has a spot where it looks like you can screw stuff in to hold the light bulbs in, but yet I don't remember seeing that in the package. It looks like you can. I and mean, these, of course, are the mounts for the cab. Um, you've got other ones here for the rest of the body, not all the way around. But other than that, it's a, it's a very straight, uh, straightforward and simple deal. Um, these aren't very complicated. They're just a lot to them but it's not actually complicated once you understand exactly how it works. Let's stick that on there. This tape is basically shot because I, I peeled it off to rewire some stuff. Um, but essentially, I mean, it's it's a, it looks a heck of a lot more complicated than it really is. Uh, they just, essentially, they're kind of daunting probably because how expensive they are, but they're really not too bad. All right, guys, welcome back. Um, I was trying to decide what else I was going to talk about. I knew there was something, and I figured it out. Um, what I wanted to do was explain how I set it up. And when I say that, I mean how I got all the hydraulics filled and all of that. Because I kind of glossed over it because I did it off camera. I was trying to make sure, you know, check all of my points and make sure everything was running good and not leaking and all that. And I kind of got ahead of myself and didn't put it on video. So essentially, when these come in, they're not going to have much oil in them. There will be a tiny bit, but not a lot. And what you're going to do is you're going to take your, your tank, you're going to fill it up pretty full, you know, because let's face it, the machine has nothing in it. So then what you're going to be doing is after that, you'll, you'll run your first set of rams, which are for the boom, and you run them all the way out and all the way back. Make sure it actually starts running smooth. And if it's giving you a little bit of a hard time, you put some pressure on the actual boom at the top. And you just basically just hold it and run it. And it will pull your hand up, and that's okay. You don't want to crank on it. You just want to give it enough tension that it pushes the air out of the hydraulic cylinder. And once it can go up and down on its own nicely and smoothly, then, of course, look at your hydraulics, double-check, make sure you don't have any leaks or anything. And you want to put it all the way up and then look at your tank, okay? And what I didn't do is do that. I just basically got it all the way up and then I started running the arm. And again, if it gives you any hard time, you just put a little pressure against it as you push it out. Because that's what you're doing, is you're doing it as you extend. I'm sorry, you would push against it like a, this way because that's what makes it extend all the way. So as long as you're, as it's extending, you're pushing that air out of the hydraulics and it will probably run out so then what you'll do is you'll top off the tank again. Um, if you can, I would probably just reduce the size of this all the way down. Like basically bring the, the ram all the way in. Like, see, you can see the ram. Bring the ram, the end of it, all the way in. Okay, so the arm's sticking out all the way. And then top off your tank. Because it's probably around about halfway, so it's not going to go all the way out. It's just going to go, but it should go all the way in top off your tank, and then run it back and forth, get the air out of that. Same technique. Then you're going to go to the other ram, which is on the front for the bucket, and you're going to repeat the same process. We're trying to run it all the way out and all the way back. It's probably not going to make it all the way. So then run it all the way back in so it's completely compressed. And then, you know, basically hold the bucket down, like forward, and then, you know, top this off and hold the bucket forward, like, twist it forward as best you can like hold it there 
and run it to where it will push all the air out of that ram. Then when you're done, what I would do, and what I did, is I ran all the rams out to where they're all completely curled out, like all the way out, okay? And then I checked, I'm sorry, I ran them all the way in. So basically I ran the bucket all the way out, then ran the arm all the way out, and then ran, ran the boom all the way out, okay? And once I did that, that means, or I'm sorry, not all the way out, all the way in to where they're completely compressed. And then I checked how much oil was in here. And I basically topped it off to about three quarter. Because of course, as you're operating, whenever you open it up, that would be like maximum oil return would be when all four of your rams are compressed. So then, what I, then after doing that, I then ran them all the way out like all the way up, like these two all the way up, that one all the way out, and that one all the way out, so the buckets will be curled, okay? And once I did that, I then checked this, and it was fine. It was at a good level. Didn't want to go any higher, and it was it was running perfectly fine. And at that point, I could move it around and do whatever I wanted, and that's how you get the hydraulics filled. Uh, some guys did bring up the stuff in the tank. I just kind of intuitively know that when I'm starting it up, I want to look in the tank because I'm going to look at oil. And if there's anything shiny or sparkly or anything in that in there, I'm going to stop what I'm doing right away and I'm going to let them know, who uh, RC4 will drive in my case, know that, hey, there's a bunch of stuff in here. You know, what do you want me to do so this can be warranted? Because I haven't touched this yet. Um, if you don't do that, they may blame you. And just because you don't know. But I mean, like anything, the hydraulics are very finicky. Um, these right here cannot get dirty. They can, but not really, because the seals will get chewed up. And you can get the seals. I know you can. To be honest with you, I never have. Um, I'm, how do I say this without saying it? It's essentially, I'm kind of lazy, so I bought a spare ram for my dozer on the blade lift, like a blade lift ram, because I figured if anything's going to fail, it's going to be that. And the same thing on the steering ram on my loader. I just have a spare, one spare, to make sure that I don't have to worry if one goes out, I can just swap it out, and then that gives me time to get seals and everything else for it. Um, haven't done that with this, obviously, I just purchased it. Um, I would rather get a rebuild kit than buy a whole new RAM set again. Um, but we'll see. Uh, but that's, that's essentially how I primed it. And once it's primed, it should run good. Um, you might have to adjust your pressure. I would do it with this one. Do not... I, if I were you, I would try and avoid this if you can, because this one can cause you, probably cause you more problems. Um, I would rather, because that's what this is designed for, so you can adjust it as you're running. Of course, as you start running it, it will reduce pressure a little bit, so you have to bump it up a little um, over time, just because of usage and wear. You know, you wear the seals and you wear the rams, like all of that. And, um, it's not much different than the tracks. The tracks are all pretty and gray right now and beautiful, but give it like a run, a run session or two and all of these track pieces are going to be silver or rust well i guess they'll probably be silver because these are i believe these are aluminum um and the paint will start wearing down and there will be like little paint shards and everything in the tracks as you're running it because it'll wear them in um, my dozer did the same thing both the steel and aluminum tracks were doing that just because with the tension they wear in and then once they wear in you readjust it if it gets a little loose you just readjust the adjusters and put the tracks back on and just keep on going it's uh they're not too complicated they just they seem daunting because of how much they can cost but in reality they're they're pretty simple and i believe they're a ton of fun and i enjoy them i enjoy my dump truck i still need to finish the second one and third one but you know we'll see if we get that done before summer i don't know that i will but we'll see we'll see how it goes i might i might actually finish the second one um, just so that way we have at least two. But anyways, I just wanted to go over it since I got the question. Uh, if you guys have any questions or comments, please let me know. Like or subscribe. Um, I would really appreciate it. But either way, thank you very much. Y'all have a great and fantastic day. And we'll talk to you again soon.